Each year in the United States, thousands of major crimes go unsolved. When the case has gone cold and police have nowhere to turn, they seek assistance from the public. This is a program dedicated to solving these cases. This is Crime Stoppers Case Files. Every year, crimes go unsolved right here in Southern California. Loved ones are left waiting. I'm Joy Benedict. As a news reporter, I've covered countless crimes and homicides, and I know that sometimes victims of these crimes are forgotten almost as quickly as the headlines fade. So tonight on Crime Stoppers Case Files, we take another look at the crimes still lingering unsolved in our communities. Let's get right to work. In December 2001, 26-year-old Cedric Hurd was walking to visit his three-year-old daughter. That's when a car approached and a man stepped out. This young father was shot and killed in front of his own daughter. Detectives and his family are still searching for answers. Cedric was my first pregnancy, so I had fallen to the um, horror stories of what childbirth would be like, what pregnancy would be like, and it was none of that with Cedric birth was easy going and pretty much Cedric led his life like that in an easy going manner. He was a good baby, happy disposition, always smiling, loved to eat, he was a big kid. I had more children um, but his baby brother is eight years younger so Cedric basically grew up as an only child and he was, when he hollered mama, three people answered. It was me, my mother, Nana, and then his auntie, Lynette. So he grew up in a very loving family and was very much catered to. I guess a little spoiled, but it never got to his head. He always uh, behaved in a very well-mannered way. Cedric was very laid back. He didn't take a lot of things seriously. It was very hard to get him angry. No matter what was going on, you know, Cedric had that demeanor that just kind of calmed everyone down. He was a good student and he made good grades. He went to a Lutheran high school and excelled in sports, and he mentored other children, so he was very um, well-liked. Had a lot of friends. Cedric worked a series of jobs. He basically had a difficult time finding his niche, so to speak. So he was security, he worked at a gas station, and I think the birth of his child really made him get real serious about what he needed to do career-wise. I remember one time he was, uh, he had gave me a bath, and that's about it. That's the only thing I remember. It was a week before Christmas in 2001 when someone decided to murder my son. It's been 10 years now, and there still is no lead as to who could have done this terrible deed. Cedric will always be in my heart. Although he is gone, we are never apart. I miss him so much. There is not a day that goes by that I don't think of him and wonder why. On December 18, 2001, at about 9.15 p.m., Cedric Lamar Heard, who was 25 at the time, was shot and killed in front of his daughter's house near Hobart Boulevard in West 109th Place in the Vermont District of Los Angeles County. That night, he headed out to um, put my grandbaby to sleep as he did most nights. And for whatever reason, Cedric paused on the porch that evening and we talked a few minutes about the upcoming year and he felt really positive about the year. And he started down the porch and he turned around and he said, Mama, I love you. I can still get the chills from him telling me that. And I said, I love you too, son. And I was compelled to kind of watch him walk down the stairs. And I stayed in the doorway and watched him down the street. As Cedric was walking southbound on Hobart Boulevard, uh, just um, south of West 109th Place, a dark colored Caprice Classic or Impala pulled up next to him. The passenger, who I believe was a passenger, got out of the car, approached Cedric on foot, and literally assassinated him. He shot him uh, approximately nine times, hit him almost all nine, 
devastating gunshot wounds from literally legs up to the head and torso. Cedric uh, died instantaneously at the scene. He was pronounced by paramedics. I would say within a half hour or so, I get a call from Taylor's mother, Lisa, who was hysterical. When I got there, I was not allowed to go to the body, and I remember thinking, why aren't they working on him? Why, why is he just laying there? I didn't want to even consider the fact that he was dead, but he wasn't moving. But I stayed there the whole time. It took many, many hours. It seemed like the longest period of my life. On uh, December 18, 2001, at about uh, 9.15 p.m., Cedric Lamar Hurd was shot and killed in front of his daughter's house near Hobart Boulevard in West 109th Place in the Vermont District of Los Angeles County. It appears to me that he was on the sidewalk, and as he reached his daughter's house, that's when a dark-colored vehicle pulls up, appears it's driving northbound on Hobart. The passenger exited the car, approached Cedric on foot, unknown if anything was said, and fired at least nine rounds at Cedric. He was hit multiple times. The shooter was up pretty close on it because there were expended casings on Cedric's remains, so he was close. Re-enters the car. The car drives north on Hobart to the first street, which is West 109th Place, and then goes east. We have witnesses that see the car stop, and for some reason they change. The driver and passenger change positions. The car takes off at a high rate of speed, almost crashes into a parked car, and then proceeds, uh, continues east towards Washington High School and out of view. This has affected my life in ways I can't even describe. A parent does not expect to bury their child. It should be the other way around. My grandbaby Taylor, she was three years old when he was killed, but she remembers him in a way that a baby can remember their dad. Just that void in her life alone is uh, significant. I don't have a father figure. Like, all I have is women to look up to. It's just not the same as any other family. Christmas time is a time where you would think it's um, a joyful time and it would never be that way for me and my family again. And I just beg that someone has had a change of conscience and that they're ready to say something. Well, obviously, uh, in my profession, we never meet our victims until they're deceased. However, um, his mother, Josella Heard Collins, um, we've kept in contact for the past 10 plus years. Sends me Christmas cards, Christmas decorations, ornaments for trees, heck of a lady, and she surely misses her son, and she would like to see some justice. And I miss him. And I just don't think it's fair that I'm denied the opportunity to watch him grow, to hold him, and to be a dad to his daughter. My grandma Jo, she'll feel better. I'll feel better because I'll know who did it. Sometimes just growing up in certain neighborhoods, um, you can be in the wrong place at the wrong time for no other reason than you happen to be walking down the street and they were looking for a target, but they found Cedric and they killed him. Suspect, we believe two male blacks at that time would have been about 18 to 20, so now we're gonna put them 28 to 30, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume. If anybody has information on this case, there is a $10,000 reward. I would urge him to call me, Scott Fines, at Sheriff's Homicide Bureau in Los Angeles County. Telephone number is 323-890-5500. Additionally, you can call Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous, but any call would help. Cedric was an alkalite at our Lutheran Church in Inglewood, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and he believed in God. He lived a spiritual life. So I find peace in knowing that he's um, with my God and that he'll be there waiting for me when I get there. Police are looking for two black males who would now be in their late 20s. They believe the two suspects were traveling in a black 1990s Impala or Caprice classic. Cedric's family is suffering, but someone out there has the power to help this family. Someone out there has answers. So if you have any information that can help detectives, call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. You can remain anonymous and you may be eligible for a cash reward.
I'm Los Angeles County Sheriff Lee Baca. The Los Angeles Sheriff's Department has partnered with the LAPD and other municipal police departments throughout our county to form the Los Angeles Regional Crime Stoppers Organization. Crime Stoppers is an important law enforcement tool, a proactive approach to removing dangerous criminals from our streets. Each week on this television program, we will share the facts about unsolved cases and you will have the opportunity to submit information that may help investigators without ever having to give your name. I encourage you to provide us any information you may have. I thank you for joining us and doing your part to make our community safer. It's August 16th, 2011. 21-year-old Isaac Ramirez is walking near the corner of Largo Avenue and Hatchway Street in Compton. He was shot and killed, leaving a young girl with no father and no one knows why. Here is his story. My son Isaac, he was a beautiful son, very happy, smiling all the time. I have two boys, Isaac and Rafael Ramirez. Rafael is 14 and Isaac is 21. They were best brothers. He looked up to him. You know, he tells his brother not to give up, do good in school, just hang in there. Isaac is 21, I'm 19, so we're two years apart which we're very, very close, just like my brother. He would be having the worst day. He would be going through so much and you could never see it. You just could never see it on him. He's always smiling and always telling me, don't worry about anything. You know, everything's gonna fall in place. Everything's gonna be okay. You know, like if it's down, it has to come back up. You're just you're gonna be all right. Just a beautiful person. Just this funny kid, always just making fun of everything, laughing. It was impossible to be sad around him. He wouldn't let you be sad. He loves playing sports, basketball, football. He plays football in Artesia High School. He was a homecoming, very popular. He just loved playing sports. We had dinner at my house at Christmas, and we bought him the Tom Brady shirt, and he was so happy. He jumped up and down. It feels so good to see his beautiful smile. He has a beautiful girl. Her name is Desire, my granddaughter. So beautiful, she looks like him. He's so cute with her. He's so in love with her. He'd be like, isn't she the cutest thing? And I'd be like, yeah, Isaac, she's the cutest thing. He would be like, oh, she got it from me. Like, that's why she's so cute. And I'd be like, yeah, she got it from you. Yeah, she did. He loved that little girl. He wanted to get a job and get a job. He was a security officer. And he did anything, go through agencies, anything the best he can to support his daughter. And he would always bring back presents for her. Even if he didn't have money, he would find a way to just get her something, just something to bring back to her. He would have been a great dad. On August 16th, 2011, at about 9.15 in the evening, victim Isaac Ramirez was shot and killed in the intersection of Largo Avenue and Hatchway Street in the city of Compton. Our victim was uh, walking down the street in Compton. Uh, he had just left a friend's house and he was in a, a neighborhood that he was very familiar with. People knew him there, um, so we were not sure exactly why this crime occurred. We have a witness that saw him walking and then moments later heard gunshots. Our evidence shows that our victim was chased and then shot from behind with a shotgun several times. The chase probably was 50 to 100 feet. The victim is found face down on the pavement in the middle of the intersection after witnesses heard gunshots. Paramedics were called and he was pronounced dead at the scene. My niece, Minerva, she called me and says, Isaac been shot. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> I couldn't believe it, my son. And we all rushed over there so fast. I remember that car ride felt like the longest ride. It was just so quiet. We had nothing to say to each other. And when we got there, we didn't know if it was him or not. They kept saying, we don't know if it's him because he's face down. 
But the shoes he was wearing, me and my mom got them for Christmas. So we knew it was him before they even turned him around. I see my son laying there on the ground. <laughs> I tell him to wake up. Oh, mommy's here. We're going to barbecue and your brother and all of us. We're going to barbecue the next day. Just wake up. My son won't wake up. On August 16th, 2011, at about 9.15 in the evening, victim Isaac Ramirez was shot and killed in the intersection of Largo Avenue and Hatchway Street in the city of Compton. The neighborhood is mostly made up of Hispanics, all residential, uh, very small, narrow streets there. Uh, so our evidence shows that our victim was chased and then shot from behind with a shotgun several times. As the victim was running, the suspect or suspects were firing at him while they were running. Our uh, witnesses report hearing gunshots. They exit their house and discover victim Ramirez in the intersection. Um, again, he was chased by, we don't know how many suspects, southbound on Largo. And then again, I, I mean, we have absolutely nothing. We have no motive for this. He was very well liked from the neighborhood so people knew him. He wasn't in a neighborhood he did not know. So we, we, again, don't know why this crime occurred. I do want answers and I do want to get justice because if the person is still out there, they could do it again. So we got to put a stop to this before they hurt somebody else's family. Every second of the day, it's just, picks at me, it picks out all of us. I see it in my mom, I see it in my auntie, I see it in his little brother. Sometimes he calls me, I don't even know how to be there for him. I don't know what to tell him because I don't even know what to tell myself. And it's like, I can only say it's gonna be okay. It's, but it's, it's not okay. It's how do you tell someone it's okay and it's not? It hurts so bad. It's like a big old cut in your heart. But it's so hard to heal. It hurts even more to know that my cousin, this beautiful person, he's just so beautiful, the most beautiful person you would ever meet, he's gone. And the person who did this to him is living their life. Like, it doesn't even matter. They're going on with their day. And I want them to know that it does matter that they took him away, that it did make a difference. It did. And that person was really special to a lot of people. We need your help. He was a good, wonderful son. If you know anything, please change your mind and have a good heart and come forward and talk to the detective or anything. If anyone has any information about the shooting of victim Isaac Ramirez, we'd really appreciate a phone call. Myself, Mike Cowett, or my partner, Paul Fournier, at Homicide Bureau, our phone number is 323-890-5500. You can remain anonymous or you can leave your name and we will get back with you. Or you can get a hold of Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous. I love him a lot and that he meant so much to me. Police have little to go on in the murder of Isaac Ramirez. That's why they need your help. This family deserves justice. So if you saw anything on that August night, if you've heard anything since, call Crime Stoppers. The number is 1-800-222-TIPS or log on to LACrimestoppers.org where you can learn how to text your tip anonymously. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of Crime Stoppers Case Files. Remember, we are here every week with more crimes and more families needing answers. These are your neighbors. This is your community. And you can make a difference.